Rob, will they, won't they? What do investors actually want here in terms of Greece? Uh, I think the press narrative has it the wrong way around. I think it, it basically says the markets don't want a Grexit. I actually think the markets do want a Grexit because then we actually get this problem out in the open. We get a small dip. We have known for a long, long time that uh, the uh, that this problem is coming down the road. So we've had since March or April to get underweight the market. Uh, and then if we get a Grexit, then it's time to buy the market. And so what you want to buy, if it does happen, is basically Greek government bonds. I think they could fall by 50%, and you want to buy the DAX. What, what do you think Cyprus wants to do? I mean, as Stephanie said, we don't really... Get, we don't really quite know his end game. Is he playing for an exit or is he playing for just better terms and staying in the euro? So far, until he called a referendum, I think that we all thought he was a rational Western actor and that he was doing the same things the way that we would think any Western politician does things. Uh, but since he called a referendum, we know that that's, that's, that's not the point. So at this point, we really don't know uh, what, he, uh, what he thinks. And the conspiracy theorist in me thinks that he's really, he really wants a de uh, Grexit because it allows him to set up a, a dictatorship in Greece. Re hold, one more time. You think, the conspiracy theorist in you thinks, he wants a Grexit so he can set up a dictatorship for himself? So I think the narrative of our him goes something along the lines of, of I have 60% of the support of the Greek population. We've already gone through a lot of trauma. Uh, if we leave the Eurozone, we become drachma. And if you look at the history of other countries that have let their currencies loose, uh, you've had a 50% drawdown in GDP the next year. Uh, but within three years, you're back to the old highs in terms of GDP. Uh, and the country is on, on, on a much sounder footing. So, you leave the EU, uh, you lose about $250 billion worth of debt, uh, you adopt the drachma, and three years from now, the Greek people are much happier than uh, another 10 years of, of what, the, what, the, what the Spaniards or the Italians or the, or the Irish have gone through. From an investor standpoint, is anyone getting burned really big in terms of Greece, or are more guys just sitting on the sidelines? Uh, I think Greece has really not been that big of an issue. Uh, I, I really think there's... Uh, more going on in terms of what uh, what's happening in China. I mean, if you look at sort of the commodity names, there have been an absolute meltdown uh, uh, recently. Um, so, you know, you have a uh, economy that's uh, the second biggest economy in the world, and its stock market is in a bear market. And all the economy economic signals coming out of China have been uh, pretty poor. Um, so, that's much. I think that's much worse. And I think people. Convince them earlier, uh, convince themselves earlier in the year that the Chinese were going to be able to, um, you know, pull off a turnaround, uh, and I think that's looking increasingly in doubt. So I think that 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 that's where the pain is. Shrub, you know, we had a market maker on this morning, Doug Tifa from Virtu, who said that uh, he was basically comparing what's happening in China to what happened in the crash of 1929 here in the U.S. Do you think it's that bad what we're seeing in China? Uh, it's funny that you say that because somebody sent me an article uh, a couple of days ago talking about how in 1929 uh, a consortium of American banks led by J.P. Morgan created a fund uh, to defend the American stock market. It worked for about two days and then the stock market crashed again afterwards. Um, so they created a $20 billion fund. Um, that's almost nothing. Uh, and you've let the momentum out of this market. And so whether it's 1929 uh, or it's 2000, 2000 with, uh, with the NASDAQ, it's, uh, I think it's the same paradigm. Markets that go up on no fundamentals, uh, when they start coming down, tend to have a, uh, a pretty nasty calm down. So, t so far, a couple of things China has done have included investing a ton of cash. Well, I guess not that much in relative terms because it's a seven, eight trillion dollar market into the big state owned companies. And then they've shut down trading in 700 of the smaller companies that were that were dragging on the index. What do you think they're going to do next? Well, so let's think about the last market that we saw this in. Europe in 2011, when the market started shutting down, they told you you couldn't short things anymore. Uh, they shut down certain markets. They closed certain things. So if the price gets bad enough, let's just close the price and make sure that you can't see the real price and reopen the market two years from now and, hoping, uh, and, and, and hope it's all, it's, it's all better. All right, that sounds um, like so, a... Sorry, continue. So uh, I think the Chinese are on their road to full QE um, of all the big 
uh, policymakers uh, in the world. They have the most levers still left, left to pull. Uh, they have enormous fiscal and monetary resources. So th they're, they're, they're going to keep going. I mean, th this, this, this was just the first of, uh, of, of, of many, many moves. And it's going to end uh, with them doing full QE the same way that the U.S., Europe, and, and Japan have. All right, Shira, before we go, we've got to talk Puerto Rico. You have spent a huge amount of time there looking at moving your fund there as an investment. What do you think of things? Uh, so Puerto Rico is very interesting because, uh, you know, we we're, were looking at the math on, on the Puerto Rican GOs, the 8% of 35, which is basically the benchmark bond, which trades around 70. Um, and we can't get the math to work around 70. Uh, we can get the math to work around 45. So it's a little surprising to me why these bonds are still here. Uh, I think these bonds could actually go down a, a, a lot more. Um, and I don't know how they get to a... Uh, sustainable uh, debt number without a, without, without a significantly bigger bigger haircut. So uh, I'm looking for things in Puerto Rico to get worse. Um, you know, these things are, are, are never easy. Uh, but I think ultimately uh, it'll be an amazing opportunity because you have um, a tax system that's got major tax benefits compared to the mainland U.S. Uh, very few other places have that. And that ultimately I think is going to be their salvation.